Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Got your questions here from Spring.me slash Aaron Rift as the road to WrestleMania 31 continues. First one today comes from Songwriter John. Hey Aaron, what were your thoughts on tonight's Raw? I 100% thought it was a super boring Raw tonight with everything we saw from last week or even the past five weeks with nothing new. Please answer in video. I thought that Raw this week was a, I guess, a good show overall. I didn't think it was a great show by any means. I think that Paul Heyman was absolutely tremendous, friggin' amazing. One of the best promos in a long time. Paul Heyman, I mean, he's always great, but this week he just, he hit a Babe Ruth home run with his promo, I thought. He, he was uh, so entertaining, and... He, more than anybody else on this show, made me excited about WrestleMania 31. Paul Heyman did his job to perfection. And there were some other highlights. You know, I got a question here about the Jon Stewart segment from Kayfabe Candy Ass. Seems like most people like the Jon Stewart segment, but do you think WWE is compromising too much of their investment in Rollins just for the sake of some mainstream publicity? I mean, come on. Seth's above this shit. He's not the fucking big show. I will say this about Jon Stewart. I thought that he did a very good job when he was out there. He didn't embarrass himself. He knew all the names of the wrestlers, which is better than 95% of the celebrities that appear on WWE television. He didn't make a fool of himself. I thought he handled himself really well in that segment. To me... I still have mixed feelings about the segment and the Seth Rollins, Randy Orton buildup. I'm still not a fan of that buildup so far. And I feel that Randy Orton and Seth Rollins is a match that should have just been straightforward. Randy Orton comes back after being gone for three months, wants his revenge on Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins keeps ducking him. And finally, at WrestleMania, Orton gets his hands on Rollins. Uh, the way they're doing it with Orange still being part of the authority and on Raw this week helping Seth Rollins defeat Roman Reigns, to me that was uh, a huge mistake because Randy Orton should be just foaming at the mouth to screw over Seth Rollins at every opportunity and um, wasn't a big fan of Roman Reigns getting pinned. Now, I understand that there was a lot of interference, not a clean finish, of course, but still, uh, Randy Orton coming out there and getting involved, whatever, you could have had a DQ or any kind of uh, count out, so many different ways you could have gone with it. But to me, uh, Roman Reigns should not be getting pinned at all, even if it's with outside interference. Wasn't a fan of that. Uh, the Jon Stewart segment, I mean... The whole point of it is to get some publicity for WWE. That's fine and dandy. I don't think it's going to lead to anything. Um, you know, I hope not because during that whole segment, I kept getting flashbacks to Hogan and Eric Bischoff feuding with Jay Leno. And that wasn't really all that great of an angle. And especially when Hulk Hogan was selling moves for Jay Leno. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to lead to something where it's, uh, John Stewart and Randy Orton against Seth Rollins and the Stooges. I really hope not. I would just like to see Randy Orton and Seth Rollins one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. But not a big fan of, of how it's been uh, going so far with the storyline. And uh, as far as the rest of Raw goes, I mean, a mixed bag for me. I mean, some interesting things. Uh, you know, the Triple H promo was, you know, really long. Um, no sting. Uh, no Undertaker, you know, it just, it felt like a placeholder Raw, you know, just to keep the storylines slowly building, and uh, they still got three weeks left, so I don't expect things to get too crazy until the last week or two. Um, got this question here from Ice Blade Ari, with the events on Raw, is Cena finally going to be a heel? I know it's an old question, but would like your opinion. I think that this week with John Cena and how he came off on the show, you know, he was acting very heelish in his mannerisms, you know, when he was talking to Axel, he said, you know, I'm going to give you one chance to get out of the ring. And if you don't, you know, I'm going to destroy you. Uh, you know, it was very, uh, a very heel-like promo from John Cena. 
I think that that's as much of a heel kind of character that we're going to see out of John Cena. Uh, the only way I could ever see WWE having Cena go full-fledged heel is if Roman Reigns really took off as the top babyface and he could successfully go into that John Cena role of doing all the Make-A-Wish stuff and, and being the face of the company. And right now, I mean, it doesn't look like that's going to happen anywhere near to the level of success that John Cena had. And, uh, you know, unless Roman Reigns really catches fire, I don't think WWE is ever going to really fully turn John Cena. Uh, but I, I do like what they did with him on Raw. Uh, you know, it, it does add a little bit of depth to Cena's character and, uh, you know, changes things a little bit. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's what he needs. His character needs a little bit of an overhaul. He doesn't necessarily have to go heel you know, just change up the character a little bit and do something different with him and have him show some emotions. You know, he was, you know, really angry, really upset. You know, that's more the John Cena that people want to see. They want to see something different from the guy that never gets mad. He never gets frustrated. Uh, so, you know, we, we saw something like that from John Cena this week, which I thought was a good thing. All right, this one comes from Slow Speed Net. What do you think about Daniel Bryan being in the IC title match at WrestleMania? I think he deserves way more better than that. Your thoughts? Thanks. Well, absolutely. You know, I talked about Daniel Bryan in the IC title match uh, last week on no DQ and a video. But, uh, you know, in a perfect world, Daniel Bryan would be in the biggest match possible at WrestleMania. And, uh, you know, when he came back and announced his return and the reaction he got, at that point, WWE should have just gone with Daniel Bryan for the WrestleMania main event. But, you know, they they were stubborn. They wanted to stick to their plan with Roman Reigns, which I totally understand because you need to try and build up new superstars and establish a new face of the company. You know, going back to earlier, John Cena John Cena's not going to be around forever. Uh, Daniel Bryan being in the IC title match, he could be in a higher profile match, but at the same time, it could be worse for him. You know, it could have been Bryan versus Sheamus and nobody would have wanted to see that match. Uh, at least with this IC title match, it really gives Daniel Bryan a chance to shine and have a memorable WrestleMania moment, even if he's not in the main event. And uh, same thing with Dolph Ziggler. It gives both of them a chance. This is the type of match where, you know, they, they can shine very bright and have a show-stealing performance and have a match that people remember for years as an all-time WrestleMania classic. Uh, so to me, you know, Daniel Bryan will take the situation and make the best of it. And the latter match for the IC title should be really good. And in theory, should elevate the IC title. You know, to me, it's no different than John Cena going for the U.S. title. You know, if anything, it'll elevate that title. And, uh, you know, the IC and U.S. titles uh, will be uh, showcased in high-profile matches at WrestleMania rather than be throwaway matches or pre-show matches or not even matches on the card at all, which has happened in the past. All right, this one comes from Awesome's W69514. What did you think of the Owen Hart and British Bulldog match that was to crown the first European champion on Raw? I think it's a fantastic Raw main event that gets overlooked because of how low the ratings were during that episode of Raw. Um, absolutely, I completely agree with you 100%. That match was just tremendous. I mean, one of the best Raw matches in history. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. Uh, just tore it up in the ring, had an excellent athletic showcase. Um, you know, I thought that that match was absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, if you've never seen that match, go check it out. Owen Hart, British Bulldog, on Raw to crown the first European champion from 97. And yeah, that match definitely uh, gets forgotten about because that was a period when when Raw was, uh, you know, struggling against Nitro. And I think that Raw, you know, was taped like three weeks in advance and it didn't do a very good rating. Uh, you know, that, that match deserves recognition. I mean, that, that was just uh, one of the best matches of the 1990s from any promotion, in my opinion. All right, last question here from Stefan Easty. A question I would like answered in video. I used to like wrestling during the late 80s and early 90s, but having watched wrestling now, do you think the fans influence it too much and do you wish kayfabe never went away? Well, it has its pros and cons. You know, fans are entitled to uh, have their opinions, and if they don't like something, they make it clear they don't like it. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you have a case where fans complain just for the sake of complaining, 
and they chant stupid stuff. Uh, this week was a perfect example. You know, the fans chanting for CM Punk. I mean, it really serves no purpose. It's completely counterproductive. If you're gonna, if you're going to rebel and go against the system, cheer for a guy who's with the company. Cheer for Daniel Bryan. You know that that I'm perfectly fine with, and I think fans should be vocal about who they want to see in the main event. I mean, they're the paying customers. They have the right to speak out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a different era now because so many fans are smart to the industry, despite what Triple H says. Um, you know, fans have the internet access and uh, they know what's going on more than ever. Uh, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, early 90s, um, you know, you only had the dirt sheets. You didn't have the internet and uh, the information wasn't as widespread and uh, you didn't have fans coming out and hijacking shows. Uh, so it definitely has its pros and cons. I mean, I, I think that it's good now that fans have the, uh, they have the stage to be vocal and they have the ability to say they don't like something and uh, the company has to listen, you know, more than ever now. But at the same time, you know, fans need to know uh, when to chant for things and when not to. And, you know, when they chant, this is awesome for every single match, it gets old. So sometimes the fans, uh, you know, are a little too smart for their own good, in my opinion. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend on Facebook and Twitter. And you can even support No DQ and a video and the website by getting a t-shirt from ProWrestlingTees.com. Check the description. Uh, check, check out the link in the description box. And uh, stay tuned to NoDQ.com for WrestleMania 31 coverage. I'll be there covering the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania, and Raw. NoDQ.com is your source for all that. And I will see you guys next time.